Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Munchkin Collectible Card Game. This was sent to me by Steve Jackson Games and is designed by Eric M. Lang and Kevin Wilson. Get deadly weapons and fabulous loot. Hire bloodthirsty monsters. Cheat with both hands. In the Munchkin Collectible Card Game, you can become the mightiest munchkin of all. Let me show you how to play. So to play the Munchkin Collectible Card Game, you need two decks. Uh, and each player needs a hero card. Here we have a Dwarf Cleric and an Elf Thief. Each deck features 40 cards with some neutral cards that are gray and cards that match your hero's class uh, with their color. Each player also needs a level counter and runaway markers. There are also numbered tokens and a six-sided die. So this diagram shows the different zones of the game area, including the uh, hero zone, uh, the deck discard pile, uh, monster zone and so on. So the middle space between the two players is the dangerous monster zone. To the left of the DMZ is your hero zone, which includes your hero card and your counter, uh, your level up marker, and your purse where you will place gold that hasn't yet been committed to a fight or otherwise used. Set your level counter to one and set it here. And make sure your runaway marker is on the runaway side, not the limp away side. On your right side is your stash. The stash starts out empty, but cards will enter and leave your stash frequently as you play. Below the DMZ is your horde, right in front of you. It starts out empty and you will play cards such as allies, um, lo loot, and locations in the horde during the game. Next to your horde over here, below your hero zone, is your deck and your discard pile is right here. Shuffle your deck and draw the first six cards into your hand. The stockpile to the side of the zones contains all the tokens and the six-sided die. These should be available for both players to reach. Both players roll the die, and whoever uh, wins the die roll gets to choose who goes first. The first player starts with one gold, and the second player starts with two gold. Now before play, each player, starting with the first player, may choose, if they don't like their hand, to shuffle their entire hand into their deck and draw a new hand instead. So if you don't like those cards, you can mulligan and get six new starting cards. Each player's turn has three phases, warm up, munchkinning, and cooldown. As soon as one player completes the cooldown, that player's turn ends, and the next player's turn starts with the warm up. Players alternate taking turns until the game ends. Now the tokens have no specific meaning unless they are removed from the stockpile and placed somewhere. They can represent gold or damage. It's whatever you need the tokens for. There are no limited tokens. If you run out, you can use something else in, in place of them. Most cards are placed in the stash face down. Monsters that survive fights and any cards with abilities that say to stash them face up are stashed face up. Face up cards in the stash are in play and face down cards in the stash are out of play. If a card tells you to zap a card, that means to tap it. Basically rotate it 90 degrees. It cannot be zapped again until it has been unzapped by rotating it back to the original orientation. Some cards say interrupt. Interrupt cards are basically cards that you can play at any time during the warm-up and munchkinning phase. You can use them to interrupt another player's turn. For example, with uh, Stabity Stab here, you play this when the defender runs away and you deal two damage to that defender. So at the beginning of your turn, you do the warm-up. So you make sure that your runaway marker is flipped back to the runaway side, if it was on the limp away side. Um, you unzap any zapped cards that were zapped previously. If any cards say an ability triggers during the reckoning step, that happens now in the warm-up phase, like this land card. Uh, during each hero's reckoning step, all heroes take one gold. So that would happen at the beginning during the warm-up phase. Any cards that were stashed in your stash are moved to your hand, and any tokens are returned to the stockpile. And after you reset everything, you draw one card and add it to your hand. There is no minimum or maximum hand size, but if you ever run out of cards in your deck, you lose. Now we move on to the munchkinning phase, and during this phase, you may take any or all of the following actions as many times as you want and are able to do so in any order. So one action you can do is play loot to your horde. Now let's look at a loot card. So here, this is the rank of the card. This is rank four. This shows how much damage it does, and this shows how much defense it has. Now you can't play loot cards that are higher than the current level you are, and your current ranks of your loot can't add up to be more than your level. So right now we're only level one. So we can't play either of these loot cards. If I were level three, I could play Robe of Retribution. Another action you can do is squish loot. Let's say you have a loot in your horde that you don't want to use anymore. You can take that loot and put it in your discard pile. That way you can play other loot instead. Another action you can do is play a location card in your horde. Now each player can only have one location in their horde at a time, like this is Honest Alice Casino. Uh, during each hero's reckoning step, that hero rolls the die, and then the different things happening depending on your die roll. So you can only have one of these at a time in your horde. If you don't want that in your horde anymore, like loot, you can squish the location, which means you can discard it into your discard pile. 
Now, if you don't want to play any loot or locations, you can play an ally card. Now, ally cards are different. They have a gold cost in the top left corner. They also have a life in the bottom right corner that indicates how much HP they have. So loot, allies, and locations can be played in your horde. Uh, but if you want to attack, you have to play a monster card. So if I want to fight my opponent, I would say I'm starting a fight and I would declare it. And then I'm the attacker and the opponent is the defender. Then choose any card from your hand. And it doesn't have to be a monster. You could bluff, which I'll explain in a second. Um, but let's say we uh, play it legitimately and do a monster face down. Now, as you can see on the top left corner, this requires two coins. So if I want to play this card legally, I would need to add two coins from my purse next to it. Now, the defender must choose if they're going to face the monster or run away. Let's say the defender decides to face the monster. Um, they can commit any number of their unzapped weapons and allies to the fight by zapping them and moving them from their horde to the DMZ. So let's say player two has Barbarian the Librarian as an ally and the Dagger of Treachery. They can bring both of them out to the DMZ. Once the defender thinks they have enough cards, they can declare they are ready, and then the attacker reveals their face down card. It's a legal play, so these coins are used up, and then here we go into fighting. Now, if this were not a monster card, or if they did not have enough coins, it would be cheating, and then we'll check for something else. But before, let's just go with a legal battle. Now, once this monster is revealed, uh, if it has any abilities that happen, you do them first, and then the defender can choose to attack it with weapons. So this Dagger of Treachery can do one damage for each token on it, uh, this one only, let's say this one had one token, then they can do one damage. So they can attack the Pygmy Succophant for one damage. Now, if the defender ever exceeds the life points of the monster, the monster is defeated. It is squished and discarded. But in this case, it still has two HP left, so it's fine. Now, the monster is going to attack any committed allies that the defender has. So he can do one damage and he can hit the Barbarian for one. Now the Pygmy Succophant has an ability where if he uh, does lifeless suction, if he deals damage, he can heal and basically remove his damage token. Now let's say that there were no allies here. If the defender had no allies, the Pygmy Succophant can attack the opponent directly for one damage. You would then place a damage token on their hero card. Once all damage has been dealt, the fight ends. All abilities that trigger at the end of a fight happen now. So for this one, whenever it damages a monster, you return all tokens on it to the stockpile. If the monster was squished, it is discarded, but if it survives, it goes into its owner's stash. So the Pygmy Succophant, if it had damage, it would keep the damage, but it moves to the stash. The defender would then move all their surviving cards to their horde. And that's how a fight goes. Now let's say the defender decides to run away. What they can do is to avoid the fight entirely and flip their token to limp away and the fight basically doesn't happen. They run away. If they do it again, they can still run away, but each time they do it, they have to take two damage. Uh, so if you feel like a fight is going to be really bad for you and you want to take the two damage, you can do that instead. If the defender runs away, any gold that you committed to your monster gets returned back to your purse. So if I committed two gold to this, I would get them back. And then this committed card is moved to the attacker's stash, keeping it face down, and the fight is done. Now let's say the defender uh, did not run away and the attacker is actually cheating and is playing a card that's not a monster. Then they are caught cheating. Like this is a weapon. Uh-oh. So they're caught. So what happens is... The attacking hero takes one damage. Okay, we put it on their card over here. Any gold they committed gets returned back to their purse. Move this card face down to their stash, and the defender just takes all their cards back to their horde. So if you're cheating, one damage, and the fight is over. Now let's say they reveal a monster, but they didn't have enough gold to support the monster. If they have any cards that can manipulate the gold value, they can play them now. Uh, if they, if it, after everything is said and done, they still don't have enough gold, then they are caught cheating, and then they would take one damage and return the card to their stash. After you've done all your actions, whether it's playing loot or locations or allies or fighting, you go to the cooldown phase. Uh, during the cooldown phase, you can't play any cards or activate any abilities, um, but some abilities trigger during cooldown. And then after you resolve all those abilities, you take these actions. You increase your level counter by one. Your maximum level is ten. 
And if your total gold is less than your current level, you move tokens and get enough gold to match your level. So if I had zero coins and I moved up to level two, I could get two gold right now. Once you do all that, your turn is done and the next player's warm up phase begins. Now you lose the game if your character ever takes more damage than their life. So the dwarf cleric has 20 HP. If he ever takes uh, equal to that or more, he's done. Or if you run out of cards in your deck, or if you give up. When one hero is remaining, that hero wins and the game ends. And that's how you play. Now here's a closer look at some of the other cards. Like example, your hero cards, uh, the Dwarf Cleric. Uh, his ability is you can zap, basically tap him, to prevent one damage to a target hero, ally, or monster. And that is an interrupt, so he can protect his cards. The Elf Thief, if you do a zap, you can draw two cards. Uh, and then move one card from your hand to the bottom of your deck. Basically a way to get more cards uh, whenever you feel like it. Here's a Skewer, it's a Mischief Curse card. You can basically deal one damage to the target opponent and stick this to their hero card. So it's almost like a status effect. Because during each of their Reckoning steps, they do Bleeding One. Basically they take one damage each time in their warm-up phase. Here's a Robe of Retribution, it's a Loot Armor. Uh, if you can use this ability, if a monster damaged you in a fight, you can deal two damage by zapping this to that monster. And they got different monsters like Card Shark. When this is squished in a fight, you can draw one card. Walking Dreads, you may pay one gold to regenerate this card, which basically means instead of discarding it, you can stash it. Leg Breaker Joe, this guy has Sketchy. Um, this ability is active only if you've been caught cheating. So while this is in your stash, you may squish it to deal three damage to a target hero or monster. So some cards kind of encourage cheating. Uh, here's a gazebo. If the defender has a location in play, then this gets a plus one attack boost. I have no prior experience with Munchkin as a property or any of the games or spin-offs or anything. This is the first time I've ever experienced a Munchkin property. It's a pretty decent card game. I do like that at each turn you level up and you slowly get more and more options because like the loot cards have specific ranks. So like on level three, you're like, aha, I can finally play this loot card. That's pretty fun. Uh, the bluffing mechanic is interesting. You could, it gives you more options if you don't necessarily have the right cards for a turn, but you can, you know, try to scare your opponent and see if they'll run away and you can get away with uh, um, doing that. Um, I think the theme and the gameplay are a little bland though. Like I never really felt super engaged or excited about what was going on. And for a collectible card game, like, theming-wise, I don't see myself, like, running out to get booster packs of this. Because it's a booster pack-sourced game. You can get starter decks, um, but with booster packs, I don't know, just... The theming seems kind of all over the place, and I was never, like, jazzed about it. I actually don't like that the tokens you get are used for everything. I'd rather have specialized damage tokens and coin tokens. It feels a little cheap to just be like, oh, this can be whatever you want. With that said, it's it's not a bad game. I mean, if you're already a big Munchkin fan, maybe you'll like this theme. For me, with no experience of Munchkin, it just kind of seems like kind of bland. Um, I don't know if this has the legs to be a collectible card success, honestly. But on its own, it's a decent enough two-player game. Not my favorite, but... It's, it's, eh.